Today we're going to set up a simple time tracker to keep track of how much time we're spending on the course. So what I'm going to do is start up Microsoft Excel, begin with a blank workbook, and set up the following. I want to keep track of the date, the hours that I spend, and some sort of a comment. So when I'm setting up this particular time tracker, I'm doing that on 6-22-2015. And when you enter a date like that, Excel actually stores this as the number of days since January 1st, 1900. So um, I can use this date in, in formulas and add numbers of days to it and, and do things like that. For the hours, we'll just type in something to get us going here. So I'm going to type in two for two hours. And the comment is read through introductory material. And we've got to start on our time tracker. So now I'm, now I'm going to save that. So file, save as, save it on my computer. I want to browse to where I'm going to put this and I like to save it on my C drive and I bury this in a couple of folders but if you've got a courses folder that would be great and I'm going to call this Hitchcock William Course Time Tracker and that appears up on the title bar so I can tell that this is an Excel spreadsheet, the XLSX um, file type, and I've got my spreadsheet set up. All right, well, this course goes for, I don't know, about 25 days or something like that in terms of calendar days. I think it's 20 actual class days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a formula here beneath the date and type in an equal sign, point, or just click on cell A2, the previous date, and I'll add one to that. Hit enter and I get the next day. So if I copy that date, and I'm going to copy that down here a ways, hit enter, it always takes the previous date, add ones, adds one to it, and gives me the next date. So I know that this course actually ends on the 17th, so I'm just going to come down to the very end, hit my delete key, delete that out. The problem is, on the screen, I can't tell which column is which. All right, So obviously this one's pretty clear, it's the date. I don't necessarily know what column B is, nor column C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the top of my spreadsheet by holding my control key and hitting the home key once. There I can see my field names, date, hours, and comment. So I want to lock those in place. So I'm going to go to cell A2 because I want to lock everything above A2 in place. Click on the View tab, click on Freeze Panes, and Freeze Panes again. And now when I scroll through my dates, I can still read what's in row number one, the date, the hours, and the comment. Hit Control Home again. It takes you to cell A2 because that's where I froze the panes, and we can do some more work. All right, next what I want to do is I want to take my hours. I'm going to format all of these cells and use a comma format. And I'm going to decrease the decimals just by one space. Now, I know it's a little bit hard to see where that made a difference, so I'll just show you it on cell B2. If I would use a comma style format, the default is to have two decimal places, and I just want to reduce that to one. Other things I want to do on my spreadsheet, I like to take the field names and so I just clicked on date, held my shift key down, cursor it over to cell C1 to select all those field names. I'm going to click on bold face. I want to center that and I want to use wrap text. Now when I do that it kind of messed up column C here, but actually if you look at my comment it's a little bit short too, so I'm just going to double click between the C and the D and widen out that column as wide as I have 
something entered in for the comments. The using wrap text, the reason I did that is if I want to change my field name to hours spent, it will wrap that text and kind of line that up a little bit nicer. For the dates, what I'd like to do is I want to keep track of if this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I want to know the day of the week as well. So I'm going to highlight all of my dates. So if you hold your shift key, hit the end key once, it turns on the end indicator down here at the bottom. Now if I use my arrow key on the keyboard, my down arrow key, I'm still holding my shift key, all right, so I hit my down arrow key, it goes all the way down to the bottom and selects all of those dates until it hits a blank cell. Now I'm going to make sure I'm on the home tab, look under the number format group, change the format to a long date. And that way I've got what day of the week is and we can quickly read through some of those. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, now what I'm going to do is go down to the bottom. I want to leave one blank row. I want to type in the total hours, compute out the average daily hours spent, and the, uh, let's make it maximum hours spent in any one day. So to get the total hours, we'll use a built-in function, the sum function, equals sum, a parenthesis, cursor up one cell, hold your shift key down, and cursor all the way up to the top to select that range of cells. It's okay to include the field name there because that a text has a value of zero, so it won't affect our, our total sum. Type in my right parenthesis, hit enter, and I've got a total of two hours spent. For the average, it's equals average. Come up to our blank cell, go all the way up to the top, hit enter, and we get an average of two hours. And for the last one, it's equal max. All the way up, shift, all the way up to the top, hit enter, and we've got two hours maximum. So if I hit control home, on Tuesday, if I spent eight hours in the class completing the first lab assignment, I should have a total of 10 hours. 10 divided by two days is five for an average, and the maximum should be eight. So if I come down to the bottom of my screen, I can check, and sure enough, there's the 10 total hours, five average, and eight spent. So our formula is automatically recalculated. Hit control home, take us back to the top. Just a couple more things to finish up with. I'm gonna to go to page layout. I wanna choose print titles. And if I've got multiple pages that'll print out on the sheet, I wanna repeat row number one at the top of every single sheet. It's kinda of like the freeze panes, but it's, it's for a printed page. For the headers and footers, for the custom header, I want you to type your name in the left-hand section. Center section, you can type in your course, or in this case, I'm just going to type in Laura's College. And in the right section, I want to type in the words date printed. And I'll use this flip calendar tool, which will give me the current date. Hit OK, and you can see there's my header, William Hitchcock, Loris College, date printed 6-22-2015. For the custom footer, you want to type in the word file, and we'll use the, this Excel tool, which will give you the file name. That way, if you change it to something different, it'll always give you the correct file name. In the center section, we want the page number, type in a space of and this will give me how many pages are in the total workbook. So it's page one of three or something like that. And for the right section, I want to have the sheet tab name. And I'll use this tool, the sheet tab tool. Hit OK. Hit print preview. 
and it looks pretty good. I've got my name and Laura's College Date printed on the header. Down at the bottom I've got my file name, page one of one. There's just one page on this. It looks like it's going to fit pretty well on the page, so that looks pretty good. Last thing, I don't want to just leave this as sheet number one. I'm going to rename that, so I right click on the sheet tab, choose rename, and call this my time tracker or some other meaningful title. So that's it. We'll hit save one more time to keep that. We can close this up when we're all done and use that spreadsheet to keep track of how much time that you're spending this course.